Biggest stories in AI in 2023? Let's talk about this from a practical perspective. Starting with models, GPT-4 and GPT-4V, the multimodal model, still way ahead of the pack. OpenAI is just on all cylinders, no one else is close. Now, Meta did give the open source some hope with the release of the Llama models, but I think the most impactful one for most of us is Sentence Transformers because it gives us embeddings and we can do a lot with embeddings. Besides that, in Scikit, XGBoost continued with some minor updates. Time GPT for time series looks really has a lot of potential there. Check that out. When we're going over to images, the Segment Anything model looked really promising. There's also the Dino V2. Besides that, Whisper just keeps rolling along as well. For data sets, the most impactful one for me was Red Pajama by Together AI. What they did was create a very large training data set for LLMs where they took the time to document it and clean it. One of the things that's happened this year for data sets is many of the good data sets are disappearing. Stack Overflow, Reddit, Twitter, all are pulling their data back. Recently, we had the Leon data set pulled because of child abuse pictures in that. This is a growing trend that a lot of us that are practicing are going to have to worry about. But on the other hand, one way we're increasing data sets is the use of synthetic data sets using LLMs, especially nowadays for things like RAG and QA type use cases. So moving to training, let's thank Mosaic ML for taking the time to give us the compute cost for building some of these large models. We also have a lot of techniques now, things like PEFT and LoRa, that help us efficiently fine tune some of these larger models. And then the last piece is Langchain for helping us put together complex prompts. When it comes to UIs for training models, there's more ways to do it than our standard way of coding. Two examples I want to highlight. One is Axolotl, which uses a YAML-based approach for fine-tuning, where we basically have a list of parameters we want to give for fine-tuning. That's it. One step, and we can be off and running for fine-tuning. The other is Comfy UI, which gives us a visual editor for tuning stable diffusion type models, where we can see what various adapters we have put into place. For algorithms, I think flash attention easily comes to the top of the list here because it's not only innovative in terms of the mathematics, but most importantly, because of the engineering. Thinking about how GPUs are designed, making sure that that algorithm works efficiently on GPUs. For model inference, I think quantization has had a big year this year, as well as alternative implementations that make it more efficient. So bits and bytes, for example, for quantization, but looking at things like GGML, which gives us a C interface, allows lots more devices to take advantage of these large language models has had a huge impact. As 2023 is a year of large language models, they've also introduced a lot of risks for us. I think the idea and the concept of red teaming is something that all enterprises have to do now, where part of a risk assessment is actively having groups check the model, try different scenarios that you might not have seen before to see, is that model going to be robust? When it comes to evaluation, <laughs> we're not in a great state of it. I've done lots of deep dive videos on that. A couple of things I want to highlight is the Open LLM leaderboard, which go shows you both the highs, the value of having a leaderboard, some way of ranking, but also how people are gaming it and the issues with that. Also, um, notable for evaluation is LMSYS, which provides the chatboard arena, giving an alternate way, a human-based way, using things like ELO. The two most interesting use cases this year have been the RAG, the question answer. We see everybody trying to deploy these. It's taught us all about not only how large language models work, but also going back to the basics of information retrieval, search, recommendations, because you need that history those techniques often to get the best results out of those RAG use cases. I also think what's happened in the area around diffusers and this all this text to image work shows is a great case study of how generative AI is affecting industries where you can see how existing companies, places like Adobe, have quickly adapted and incorporated these tools in there where data providers like Getty Images have started taking on and addressing this, as well as seeing how the open source fits in among all of these other pressures. One community I want to highlight this year is the Local Llama, which is the Reddit group, which has been pushing for innovations of local LLMs. It's done a quite a good job of that. It's a very different style than, for example, the old machine learning on Reddit in terms of the type of audience and what content but it's been very aggressive and very useful in pushing the research envelope. There's a lot more that could be here, but I wanted to stay succinct and I wanted to focus on things that had a practical value where data scientists, machine learning engineers can start using this stuff right away.